talk about, you know, gatekeeping, you would walk into a shop and just simply the act of asking if they would take an apprentice, you could get beat up. <laughs> right. right. Not all shops were like that. I'm not right. saying that at all. Yeah. But I, I worked in a town where a new shop opened up and the next day literally was leveled with dynamite. Mm -hmm. So do you <laughs> want to leave tattooing better than that? Yeah. Like, yeah, I understand like, no, not letting everybody in and stuff like that, but like leveling a building and risking lives, like, holy shit, mm. you know? Mm. Brothers and sisters, we can't thank you enough for all your love, your support, and your faithfulness. It's been brought to my attention. If you really want to do something to bless us, to thank us, apparently simply hitting the like button on YouTube would be more impactful than what I ever knew, let alone subscribing to us on YouTube if you're not already. And then over on Spotify and Apple, please leave us a review. All of your listening and your comments to us mean the world to us. Um, and do us a favor and just hit like on YouTube and leave us reviews on Spotify and Apple. And we're going to continue to serve you with our whole heart. Thank you so much. Hello, brothers and sisters, tattoo guardians all over the world. Welcome back. You've got me and Joshua Carlton and Mike Sirnayatsky all together back home in our studios. I'm back from Mexico again. It was a week of miracles with my wife. And my God, uh, it's just so good to be back and to get to do an episode with my brother, Mr. Joshua Carlton. How are you, man? I'm good. How are you? It's it's definitely good to have uh, kind of everything back in the studio. Yeah, you know, you we're away for a while. I did the episode kind of on my own with Nikki before, so it's, it feels it feels home to be back, right? Dude, it does. And speaking of, that was a wonderful episode that you and Nikki did. One, thank you for serving us from your table again. Uh, it was powerful and it seemed to have gotten lit up with a lot of uh, opinions yeah. and comments. Yeah, we, we really enjoyed doing it. Nikki and I have talked a lot about like kind of doing our own podcast someday. Like it would maybe be like a true crime podcast. We both really like that. And it's funny because actually I'll listen to too much true crime, like going to bed, you know, and I'll like start having these weird dark dreams. And I'm like, yeah, maybe I need to stop listening to so much murder. Damn. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so so it was nice to do it with Nikki on, you know, tattooing because coming off the heels of where we talked about, you know, apprenticeships and how they're accelerated at a rate that seems so beyond what we're used to. You know, mm. when you and I came up, yeah. we know what apprentice tattoos look like. Yeah. And it doesn't look like what Mike and Nikki are doing. Their tattoos look like straight up professional tattoos, right? Right. Um, easily a good year more advanced than normal. And so we kind of put it out there like, why right and we got some really wonderful feedback from you guys and it, and it, it makes so much sense uh you know it's like well hey you know obviously you know we have the ipads now and we have access to tons of not only images but information and I, because i've been tattooing for so long i kind of forget right like if someone's been tattooing for six years that's such an incredibly different world than we grew up in, you know? Yeah. And like, it's, it's, I don't, I just don't stop and think about how crazy different that is, mm. you know? Yeah. And uh, so not only access to information and, and, and incredible imagery. Yeah. Because I used to love going to the bookstore. Mm -hmm. You know, you go to the bookstore and you find these gems of a book and it's like, oh my gosh, this is that book that's got this, <laughs> all these poses of the male anatomy and the female anatomy, and I'm going to be able to draw from these. And, you know, you got this kind of this secret and you, tattoo shops always had this huge library. And it's like absolutely a great idea to have those things. But I, I even find myself, if I'm looking at a book and it's 80 bucks, I'm like, well, I can bet you I can just find these same images online too. Mm. Somebody's already scanned this book or something like that, you know? Right. Which is a whole nother thing in itself because it's kind of like uh, cannibalizing from the person that wrote the book, you know? Yeah. But just having access to all of those images and to all of the information and tattoo artists today are really willing to share, which is wonderful. And for those of you did, that didn't really listen to the podcast and just saw a couple of the clips, there were, there were a few people that were that called Nikki and I old gatekeepers. Nikki was like, well, that's the first time I've ever been called old. Mm. <laughs> And it's like, if you, if you, 
you know, our listeners, I would hopefully know that I'm the last thing from, I'm, I'm the farthest thing from a gatekeeper. I've been one to promote education and the future of tattooing for a very long time. Yeah. And, you know, I'm simply saying, I was simply saying that I don't think tattooing is for everybody. I don't believe everybody deserves to tattoo. I wasn't saying you can't go to college and also learn how to tattoo. Right. I was right. simply saying, I don't necessarily want to take on an apprentice who is going to college and is toying around with the idea of tattooing on the side. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. It's more like, about the like commitment they, they, level. It, it, it's much more about the commitment. I completely realize that not everybody has a fire inside. Mm -hmm. And I've said so much that you have to have that. And you don't have to have it. But again, these are the things that I want to work with. If, you know, yeah. who would I take on as, a, as an apprentice? Yeah, right. But um, for the people that kind of just said that I was a gatekeeper or my wife was a gatekeeper, um, I, I, I really ask that you listen to the actual entire episode and go back and listen to other episodes. I think you'll learn that I'm, I'm definitely not about that. I'm all about sharing knowledge with those who are truly eager to learn. Yeah, you know. Man. Yeah, always have to. So with that, yeah. So I just wanted to kind of say that and and thank everybody that did write in. Um, you know, it's really important to get feedback, not just good feedback. It's really, really important to be open and transparent to all forms of feedback. So. When I get something like that, I don't get mad and I don't lash out on the internet. If I hear enough, you know, signal, that the whole signal to noise ratio, right? Well, maybe if you hear enough of it, you kind of sit back and you say, hey, you know, if a lot of people are saying this, maybe there's something to look back onto, right? Mm -hmm. So again, I, I, I fully believe I'm a big uh, proponent of transparency, especially in business and like I'm a big fan of open source, like when it comes to technology. Mm -hmm. I love it when a company comes up with something brilliant, but then they give that technology, they give the, the code is open source so other people can use it, mm -hmm. right? That's transparency. Mm -hmm. So without being redundant, just going back, like we appreciate the feedback, we appreciate all of the love, but we are listening as well to the negativity. I wouldn't even say negativity, right? I would just say opposition, but Again, if you're going to say something, I hope that you would listen to the entire episode. If that makes any sense. Yeah, man. Yeah. And because, yeah, I mean, these, these days, as we know, tattooing's ever-evolving uh, change in so many ways. We know of like we talked with like Mike and Nicole, just tattooers coming out the gate swinging, which led to so many people writing on maybe a resources and things that they have at their fingertips that others just didn't not that long ago. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, shit, the fact that you can just buy needles already made and not make your own, like that's Neanderthal talk already, but it wasn't that right. long ago as you and I know, <laughs> but regardless, so there was a lot of feedback and the differences of tattooing then versus now and all the technology and the awareness and the resources at our fingertips, unlike ever before. So that's one. Two, Mike even said to himself, Nicole said it too, who you surround yourself with and associate with matters, your environment, right? Your frequency. People say you become most like the five you hang around most, right? Nicole's been by your side for 28 years watching you lay it down like you said the imprinting learning by osmosis her environment what she frequently sees has become her frequency mike has been around and for years he got to watch and frequently see what's really possible that became so normalized it raised his frequency because of what he would frequently see every day right boom coming out the gate with lenses like a six or a seven going for 10 versus a negative one learning how to walk right because of yeah. his environment so that's two um tattooing then versus now because like you said i feel like these days most people are more willing to help empower to sharpen to encourage the true leaders that have gotten in the game know uh, what it's like to really lead a team and it's to literally empower them and yes even though you brought up negative people right and we my goodness we can see it 
happening all the time. It is crazy. And how in our industry, people are so quick to throw stones, right? Or to judge or right. cast opinions, right? Um, and that comes sometimes with the territory. And that's okay. But I still want to remind every single one of you that it's just that the negative people are just being louder. That's all. But that there are still more strong, beautiful, successful, empowered, positive people, men and women, artists, tattoo artists all over the globe that uh, are doing just fine and aren't even dabbling in all of the negative talk. But this is where I encourage all of you to just start to live your life louder you know, so that it's not skewed, so that people aren't just thinking, oh, everyone in our industry is a bunch of whatevers, right? That's still just a part. All the other tattoo artists that, uh, you know, they're just not even involved, responding, yeah. reactive, you know? And I just want to encourage, I shout out to all of the brothers and sisters out there who continue to just walk in love, who continue to really want to leave tattooing better when they found it. And if and when you have a concern about something, your industry, your brother, your sister, that you go to them, right? In love, yeah. my goodness. Yeah. Shout out to um, the true blues. Shout out to if you're a true friend. Shout out to where if like you got my back, no matter, no matter whatever type friends. Shout out to those who say tattooing saved their life. Come on, man. Because that's that's very real. Yeah. You know, I hear I hear that a lot. Absolutely. Like when, when, whether it was a long time ago or today, somebody was on a path that was not a good path and somehow tattooing found them. Yeah. And they found this love, this passion that they can pour themselves into. My God. And it saves their life. My God. You know, yes, um, yes. You know, I, what what does it mean to leave tattooing better than we found it? Mm. Right, we say that a lot. I've said Riley and I have said this since the beginning of the inception of uh, the Evergreen Convention. Mm. Our goal, what's our mission? To leave tattooing better than we found it. Mm. It's like, well, what does that exactly mean? Right, that's mm. pretty generic, pretty broad. Mm. You know, to to me, it's kind of across the board. Like when I found tattooing. Let's just be honest. It was really a lot of toxic behavior. Talk about, you know, gatekeeping. You would walk into a shop and just simply the act of asking if they would take an apprentice, you could get beat up. <laughs> right. right. Not all shops were like that. I'm not right. saying that at all. Yeah. But I, I worked in a town where a new shop opened up and the next day literally was leveled with dynamite. Mm -hmm. So... Do you yeah. want to leave tattooing better than that? Yeah. Like, yeah, I understand, like, you know, not letting everybody in and stuff like that, but, like, leveling a building and risking lives, like, holy shit, mm. you know? Mm -hmm. So I have always been a big proponent for proper tattoo education, right? So those that are really, truly hungry to learn have the access to learn correctly, and when I say correctly, I mean, you know, really understanding all of the aspects of tattooing, the importance of it, the fact that we're standing on the shoulders of giants, the, the, you know, a big part of it that a lot of people that think they can dabble, they miss on, you know, the, you know, bloodborne pathogens aspect of it. So there's so many things wrapped up into leaving tattooing better than we found it. But a lot of what I tend to focus on is camaraderie and peer-to-peer -peer, like acceptability and living in light right uh rising everybody up together so we can all get better uh you know people will ask me all the time my family my grandmother used to ask me like well josh if you're helping your fellow tattooer aren't you worried that they're going to just get better than you and it's like nana that's the goal mm -hmm. that's the goal yeah because then i can i'm going to learn from that person mm -hmm. right mm-hmm you know, I posted something the other day on one of my social medias about uh, only a fool, you know, uh, doesn't want to share stuff with other people, right? Mm. Like, like you want to celebrate your friends being more successful than you and you kind of go back and forth with that, right? Yeah, right. 
they, they raise you up, you raise them up, a rising tide raises all ships. You've heard me say this before. Mm-hmm. So, so for me, that's, I think, what's at the heart of leaving tattooing better than I found it yeah. 33 years ago. Yeah, man. Um, and I think we're well on our way in a lot of aspects. I, I see a lot of really wonderful people. Some of the most wonderful people I've met in my life, some of the most trusting people I've ever met in my life are tattoo artists. Yeah. You know, um, in general, uh, I've met uh, very few that I was like, Ugh, stay away from them. Right. Mostly it's been very, very positive. Yeah. Which is incredibly exciting. And like looking back at the art side of it, Mike tattooed a flower the other day that had he done that tattoo even 10 years ago, mm-hmm. would have people have been like, holy fuck. Mm-hmm. You know, 15, 20 years ago, it would have been, seemed impossible. Mm. And I just, I just, I'm so fascinated by that. I'm so fascinated that that's even possible. And that goes back to the standing on the shoulders of giants because of people mm-hmm. that paved the way, Nico Hurtado's and the Kyle Cotterman's and you, Matt, and you know, these people that pave the way for let's try something different. It allowed somebody like Mike. It allowed somebody like Nikki mm. to see what was possible, mm. even in its even in its early stages, right when it wasn't perfect yet, and color portraits were a little bit wonky and this and that. But people were like, "Hey, I think this is a viable option." Because yeah. before, I remember taking a seminar from Jack Rudy, and somebody asked. This was this was way a long time, many many years ago. Right. He was teaching black and gray portraits, and yeah. somebody was like, "Well, what about if you want to do it in color?" And he just immediately was like, "Impossible. Yeah. It's just not possible." Mm-hmm. And I just love that now. Is it not only possible, but it's 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 unbelievable what people are doing. Yeah. Right. Yeah, about the. I don't know. I just I'm I'm. I'm still very kid in the candy store with tattooing and I'm like really excited about where it's going. And I do want to nurture the people that are going to be the next person to raise the bar for everybody. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And in, in what that looks like in all facets on raising the bar. And again, yes, ushering out all models we know that there's no cookie cutter way anymore even if in the beginning there was three cookie cutter ways to choose from and here this is the only way we right we know so much has evolved even the models of tattoo artists and their best life i.e work life balance because yeah josh i came from the camp that you know it's funny because like even my own shop now the crew that i have now is not the type of crew i originally raised up or definitely not the type i came from meaning my shop closes at 8 p.m what the fuck you know what i'm saying there's a time if you if you were a tattoo artist and you're going home at 8 p.m you are not fucking about this life or you're not gonna be a good you know (laughs) that's that is such a good example because when i moved to oregon i started catching that like closed on sundays closes at eight every other day and i was like the uh, fuck? I used to stay until like two in the morning I'm and saying, my wife dude. is pissed all the time. And like, what I mean, are you doing? We were at least open it's, till yeah. midnight, but I was probably there till yeah. four, you know, like yeah, going yeah. hard, you know, but the shop's open from noon to midnight, you know, but not anymore. Yeah. And I think like some days my shop closes at six, you know, <laughs> but and so there's just so much has evolved. Even my own model of how I thought the only way is the way now again, I, again, cause you know, managers lead everyone the same way, but leaders lead people collectively, but also on an individual basis. So how I treat Mike and work with Mike is different than how I treat someone else in my shop. But what Mike wants is different than someone else in my shop. What And so the journey Mike's been on was different. Example, shout out to Beck, who works at our shop at aisle nine. She's actually going to Evergreen Tattoo. Uh, here in Dayton, Ohio. Shout out to our lovely sister, Beck. Well, just using her as an example, when she came, you know, not to divulge too much, but shout out Lady Power because she was, in, you know, just going through a divorce, single mama, multiple children, and came to me to consult about tattooing, and I saw magic in her and just knew I was supposed to take her on. By the way, looking back over the years, I think I hired more women, took on more women apprentices than men until recent years. But anyways, um, 
Fast forward to today and Beck has created, she's a wonderful tattoo artist with a wonderful clientele, her perfect work-life balance that serves her as a mother, as a parent, and as a single mom empowered now to where she's able to buy her own car, pay for her own place, right? And, and guess what her schedule is, Josh? She comes what? in every day and tattoos from 10 a.m. to 2. She's done at 2 p.m. Wow. Off to pick the kids up from the bus at 3 and go home and be mama. Right. Wow. Not that long ago, you'd have told me that's some fucking whatever. I, you yeah. know, some bitch. Yeah, that, shit, whatever, that don't even to, exist, to, right? But let yeah. me tell you, back to what you and Nicole were talking about. So, are models like that possible? Absolutely. And guess what? It serves Beck and her children great. She's provider for her household financially and motherly. She's, it's like such a win. So all the people that were bitching like about the part-time, that's not what we're saying, but guess what? For Beck to have that, she had to hit a season of full on commitment and going all in yeah. hard. You do not have to live a lifestyle of going all in hard in the paint forever, but all of you will have to go in and out of seasons of it. Right. Yes. And Beck did have to commit the average apprenticeship at, our studio is 12 months. Now students can get through it quicker. Some may take longer, but it took Beck almost two years, right? Regardless, she committed. She paid the price even to the degree that she could on her schedule. And we honored her for that, right? But anyways, fast forward today, she's empowered and off doing it with what others would consider a part-time model, but it's successful for her in her life. And I'm real fucking proud of her. And so there's all different types of models. At the same time, we got other dudes um, at the shop or other artists at the shop um, and their models completely different. And they're coming right. in four days a week, doing all day marathons and doing and living, you know, in their life looks different too. So do their clients and their projects. And that's what fills them up, you know, and that's, um, where we take people is to pull the best version of them out of them. You know, Beck's more of a, a beautiful illustrative artist. I walked in and she was like doing Kermit the Frog playing a guitar as a tarot card. It was fucking dope, right? But mm -hmm. then Mike that sounds dope. and Tyler are setting up and Tim Grounds are setting up for all day marathons, you know, and Beck will be done in three hours. And they're just getting warmed up and might be out of here in 13 hours, right? And yeah. those are my fucking yeah. dog, road dogs right there. Right. You know That's what, what we're used to, yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm it's, used to. You know, but it doesn't you know, mean speaking, the other is there's something wrong with it, right? Right. Yeah. Right. I, I love that we're able to make that happen. Like, I love that your studio allows that to happen because some shops are so rigid. Yeah. Um, I have an incredible artist working for me, Bob Kelly. And for him to just be his best... He starts his tattoos at like six o'clock in the evening <laughs> and, and uh, he'll be there till all hours of the morning yep. and his clients absolutely love him. Mm. He communicates with them ahead of time. And when you look at Bob's work and you come <clears> in and you see the paintings on the wall and you go, I want that. Well, that's how you get it from Bob. You know, love we're it. kooky artists. We're love kooky it. artists. And I'm not going to, if I were to say, Bob, but you know, I need you here at 10 a.m., you know. Mm -hmm. If he's not going to bring his best work, then mm -hmm. then I, I don't want him there at 10 a.m. I want him there at his, his best time. Yeah. And that works for him. And Josh, you bring up of, a wonderful fucking point right there. And it's one is because Bob knows who he is and how he operates at his best. But other than that, it sounds like he's able to clearly convey that mm -hmm. so that the client, like you said, they know what they're signing up for and they love it. If I'm going to yes. work with Bob, I'm going at six. I'm down for an all nighter. That's how Bob rolls. I'm signing up for. So I'm all right with it because it was communicated clearly on both ends. Right. When and, and that's that transparency I talk about. Yes. Dude. Across the board. Across the board at every level. Whenever there's an unhappy client for any reason under the sun, it usually, usually always points back to a breakdown in communication somewhere yep. along the way at every level. And then people will get upset, uh, this or that, or they charge me this or that. But it's not, at that point, it becomes about the number, but it wasn't at first until there's a breakdown in communication and or the yes. service, you know, that yes. was expected to be delivered or provided, but it always comes back down to communication. I remember back, you know, I charge, what I charge today is a lot more than what I charged, you know, 20 years ago, right? 
Right. But I remember even back when I, Josh, there's a time when my day, I had two packages, 250 for half day or 500 for the whole day. Right. And even then, do you think I ever had an unhappy client and was fucking pissed and wanted to like make my life hell and they fucking sure. paid me 250. Right. Like right. I'm just saying at every level, whenever I had a con- unhappy client, whether they paid me 250 or 2,500 or whatever the case may be, any time they were unhappy or if there was some sort of falling out, we could usually trace it back to miscommunication between one of us or both of us. And therefore my service did not match their expectation because I dropped the ball on the communication of the exchange on that day. And I've had to learn that so many times over and over again, which is why I can clearly teach it with such power today because of all the years of fucking it up and learning, you know, through it. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I think that's the beauty of saying, you know, learn from my mistakes, mm. you know, because part of the artist curse is a lot of us do lack communication skills. A lot of us lack social skills. That's very common to talk to any any artist, tattoo artist or, or, or not. Yeah. And they don't they don't they have some social anxiety that kind of seems to come with the territory of a lot of artists. Yeah. And so I used to suffer from uh, communicating. And you've heard me in the past talk about, oh, that's for future Josh. I literally embarrassingly will say like way back in the day, uh, my consultations consisted of my potential future client just kind of talking to me and me kind of tuning out and re- basically kind of going, I'll deal with that the day of, right? And it was always <laughs> fucked. You know, it was like, oh, that's right. You wanted this monkey hanging from that too. And like, yeah, oh yeah, Dude, that's right. let me draw that now. Yeah. And you're just totally unprepared. And obviously I got better with that. Cause like I said before too, future Josh stuff caught up real quick oh, with him. Yeah. And uh, so I'm trying to be an actual adult now. <coughs> but a, a tip for me, for those of out there that are struggling with communication, cause it's par- communication is paramount, right? Um, it, I have found... I know Matt really well. I know my wife really well. Think of a good friend of yours and how you would talk to them, right? So instead of you feeling awkward around your client and you don't know what to do with your hands kind of thing, pretend you're speaking to your good friend. I can talk to, before we start podcasting, you know, Matt and I, you know, we we dick around for 10 minutes before we start. And because we're friends, we can just talk. Try to talk to this potential client as if they were your friend. That way, when they say, hey, can you do some incredibly unrealistic thing that they want in their tattoo because they're not a tattoo artist and they don't understand how it works. You know, they want you to do a playing card and then put their family portrait in each one of the hearts, (laughs) right? Yeah. Well, we could get mad and go on the tattoo forums and bitch about that client, or we could take that as a teachable moment to educate them. So if Matt were to ask me that, I could say, you know, Matt, let's say Matt's not a tattoo artist, he's just a friend. I, I would, you know, because I'm comfortable, I could easily say, oh, that's, it would be so cool, but that's, uh, that's not how it works. It'd be very irresponsible. Even if I was a good enough artist, that I could pull off a portrait in a one inch heart. It's not responsible tattooing. It won't hold up. So let's revisit a possible design change. You know, as to before, I would just kind of be like, mm, maybe we can do that. And then on the day of the tattoo, I just try, hope they forgot, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so it, it really does come down to communication on, again, across the board including what to do when you show up, Mm -hmm. you know, you don't need to worry about shaving your skin. Don't, um, come, don't show up with some sort of numbing solution on without discussing that with your artist first, because several of them do affect the skin, you know, show up well fed, hydrated, clean. Right. And then it's even going all the way into aftercare and the payment and what types of payments do we take? Is it just cash? So many things, right. And all of this can be handled with simply good communication. Yeah. And unfortunately, I learned way too late in the game and a lot of the problems that I had in the beginning would have been solved and have been since solved with good communication. Absolutely. And it's just growing our awareness and taking responsibility and remembering we're either going to win or we're going to learn and both are valuable. And guys, I've taken yeah. so many L's, you know. Yeah. I, I've gotten to the point to where, like, oh, this is going to sound weird. I almost like losing sometimes mm. because the lesson is so big. Yeah, brother. 
Yeah. You know, it's like, well, that didn't go at all as planned. <laughs> Man. And then it's like, okay, now I'm getting, but see, I love the journey though. Mm -hmm. I love, I'm obsessed with learning. Mm -hmm. Like I'm, I'm, I'm like ridiculously obsessed with learning. Yeah. Um, which is why I'm excited about some of the future AI stuff. And we can get into that a little later if you want to. But yeah. sometimes, yeah, when I make a mistake, I am like, fuck yeah, what's next? Because mm -hmm. I'm going to be so much fucking better now that I know that that didn't fucking work at all. Man, my God. You know? Yeah, brother. And it's, and then back to, you know, so one communication, but also to community. And I love that you're pointing out still to this day, most tattoo artists, you know, are fucking great people, right? Um, Absolutely. The ones you want to stay away from in your experience have been more rare that you've encountered. And that's just beautiful because again, it's like, you know, I know people can get jaded on like fair weather friends, you know? Yeah. Um, and who do you become in the midst, you know, of the noise? This is what I love. Gary Vee has always said, like, hey, man, if you just want to build the biggest building in town, go ahead and do just that versus trying to do it by tearing everybody else's down. You know? Mm, yes, I love that. Uh, I love that. And again, shout out to every tattoo artist that's this just all about building something beautiful and encouraging others to build something beautiful. And if we see a brother or a sister stumble, if we really want to, care about our industry like my goodness i don't know about you but i'm not going to pick up my stone i'm going to go over and help them get up you yeah. know what i'm saying if i really yeah. say i care um you know let's just go ahead and build the biggest building in town versus trying to tear others down and sometimes yeah. that's when others may need us the most especially those of you that are riddled with Opinions. <laughs> yeah. And it's really important to walk the walk and not just talk the talk, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody can just tell you what they're going to do all day long. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, what are you really doing? And, you know, you know we've heard things you, like no one that's doing better than you is going to tear you down. Yeah. Yeah. Whenever you see people that are just being asses, like mm -hmm. nine out of 10 times, you know, they're, they're definitely not doing even close to the level that you are at. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, very rare you know, you think Robert Hernandez is going to say some shit to you? No, he's busy doing amazing tattoos. Right, right. Yeah. Right? And I, I, I will ask myself that sometimes when I go onto a forum, right? And there's some heated debate and, you, you know, you've got this strong opinion. Like sometimes you don't have enough, most of the time, you don't really have enough information. You weren't there to mm. know what exactly is going on. Mm. And you'll, you know, you'll start to write something super mad and it's not going to change anybody's mind. It's like, <laughs> would, would Robert Hernandez do this? Would, whoever your hero is, right? Would, you know right. what I mean? Would, right. would Horiyoshi do this? My like, God. Maybe, yeah. I should just go, maybe I should just go sit outside and draw some trees. Well, I just can't I need even relate, like taking the time you know, especially if it, I just can't even fucking relate, you know, because, you know, they say like, hey, you'll never like no one's going to hate on you. No one that's doing better than you is going to hate on you. And it's like, OK, but I, I don't even hate on people that's doing better than me. Like, I don't get it either way. Uh, like, yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? And, like, and I've heard you in the past <laughs> multiple times say that you have a lot of people that have hated on you. Oh, yeah. So this is coming from somebody that gets that and still returns with so much love. Right. My goodness. You no. Know, and, and again, I've said it before, like you're the friend that I kind of have to say, oh, hey, you know, this is real. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so that's a really impressive to me that you've been able to continue that light, right? Man. Um, and I, 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 I kind of ad nauseum, I repeat myself so much, but the beautiful message that we get on the daily mm. of this podcast, I, I don't think I ever was really prepared to understand the value of that for me as a as a human mm. as somebody that's on my own journey right like when somebody writes me and tells me this long story about how it affected them in a positive way or uh recently somebody was telling me how they went through did they were just kind of an asshole they had just become bitter and jaded and the podcast was like well fuck it what do i got to lose right josh says you know go ahead and commit one year and he did, and his life is drastically changed because of it. And he, yes, he still has tons of shortcomings and nothing is perfect. And he's learned to embrace the journey. And it's like, that alone is worth every second that I sat here in front of this microphone. Man, Josh, it's beautiful, brother. You're right. You're so right, man. <laughs> I love it. 
Oh, I love it, man. I think I think tattooing is just such an incredibly beautiful thing. Like, you know, you hear we have the best job in the world, and obviously, it, you know, that's anecdotal to the person that, you know, if somebody wants to be a surgeon, and that's that's the best job in the world to them if they're a surgeon. But my God, look how lucky we are! My God, look how lucky we are! Yeah, there are so many tattoo artists around the world, but yet somehow we all still maintain enough business to do better, usually than our parents did. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We do. We can. We can make good money. We can do what we want. A lot of us were not really cut out for quote unquote regular jobs, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, I don't know enough myself to go into medicine or into tech. I've got, a, I'm an idea guy. I have a ton of ideas, but I don't know how to write code to make that app that I was talking about. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? I don't have those abilities, but I know tattooing because I poured my heart and soul into it. Mm-hmm. But still to this day, I am incredibly so thankful for tattooing. I'm so incredibly happy tattooing found me. I kind of can't believe it. I've made a lot of mistakes in my life and it's like, I, you're telling me I still, 33 years later, I still get to get up and tattoo you? Are you kidding me? <laughs> you know? And I think with the whole cancer thing, when that's what was at risk of being taken away from me, when I was in the wheelchair, I was like, oh my God, tattooing, what about tattooing? What about my clients that I've booked that have been waiting for so long? Can I tattoo in a wheelchair? Am I going to feel good enough? What are they going to do if I throw up in front of them? What am I going to do if I get, you know what I mean? Mm. All of these things. And I just wanted to tattoo. And even now, just the other day, Nikki and I had a fly-in client. He's flown out twice now for a collaboration. And we're like, well, who's going to start and all this? And I found myself going like, well, I'd love to tattoo because I'm not tattooing that much, right? So yeah. even after all these years, you think I kind of roll my eyes and be like, here we go. Kind of, you know, I was like, ooh, I can't wait to get in on there on that, some of that shading, you know? <laughs> and so, yeah, so I guess, I guess talking about leaving tattooing better than you found it, the artists that have been around for 10 years plus, are you still excited? Are you still in love with tattooing? Does it still feel like watching a magic trick when you were a little kid? Like, I feel that. I really feel that still. I really hope you do. Mm. I really do. Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful, man. It's so, so beautiful, Josh. In ways to reinvigorate that can show up in so many different forms. Like I have found, I've seen it with Brenner and other people that even when we hit patches of maybe feeling plateaued, what can inspire us or reinvigorate us or pull us out of it is literally empowering or helping someone else. And when you like show someone else and you see their light come on and shine, it can reignite yours, you know? Um, yeah. That's why people going to conventions can get their fire returned on by being surrounded by two other artists, 200 other artists that don't live in their town, their city of doing it and walking it and talking yes. a little bit different, right? That's great that you brought that up because I see that so much. That's why we actually have the educational part of Evergreen two days prior to the convention. Nice. Because everybody just gets super fucking like lit up, right? Mm. You know, like I'm sure you've been to like a town square meeting or some sort of thing, you know, and everybody's like these speakers are on stage and everybody in the audience is like, fuck yes, (laughs) you know, like day one, they've already had day one of the actual tattoo uh, convention. They've already had two days of education right. and they're super, they're on fire. Right. Yes. And it's like you, you walk through Evergreen and it feels like electricity mm. just like zapping everywhere. And that's, I fucking love that so much. Man, that's so good. Oh, it's so good. Cause I know a lot of people get like, I always call it the 10 year burnout. Mm-hmm. Like whenever I'm uh, whenever I'm teaching somebody my everything I know course, like I like to talk to my students who's been tattooing for 10 years mm-hmm. plus. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that's most people mm-hmm. that, I, that I'm working with. And uh, I'm always like, right about the 10 years, did you want to quit? And let's say, I'd say 90% yes, at some point, right about the 10 year mark. There's only so many Pinterest pictures that can be shoved in their face, right? And they're right. just like, fuck this, I'm, I'm, I'm out. Mm. And then something usually happens and they're reinvigorated. Oftentimes I can proudly say that my class will kickstart that. Yeah, You know what I mean? Like them taking this and kind of learning some new things, some new ways to look at things, especially. Yeah. Because again, I say learn from my mistakes. And yeah. one of my biggest mistakes was 
looking at things just the wrong way, mm-hmm. like approaching it the wrong way. And uh, that little change of, of attitude will, will, will shoot you up. Like, you know, it, it'll really, really send you on a higher trajectory. My and God. a lot of times that's the little piece that they were like, boom. Like, they'll be like, oh, I love that you taught me this, this, and this physical technique, right? Yep. This shading secret. Yeah. But when you said this, yes. it clicked. Boom. And uh, I don't know. Those are the moments for me, the yes, aha moments, right? Yes. You know? Yes. And I love it because when we get to teach, when people get to sit at the invitational and, the, and through the educational, that it's not only what's transpiring in them right there, but all the seeds that are planted in them that sprout throughout the weekend later on or weeks later yeah. or months later, you know, is so yeah. awesome too. I couldn't imagine being, you know, a kid like, I don't know, 12 and going with, to a convention that's in your town with your parents and just that feeling of, you know, when, when that kid was like, oh my God, I'm going to be a tattoo artist, mm-hmm. but he's seeing the work today. Mm-hmm. Oh my God. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, he just scrolls, you know, he just strolls over and he's, you know, he's watching, uh, you know, Robbie Lato's tattoo. Mm-hmm. It's just like, oh, that's just totally normal today, well, right? But you know, speaking like, of like, no, but, it, uh, you but know. dude, if I was to feel like if I was to look through, look at it through a lens, I feel like that you pull out often and to see things interesting is for all we know, it's normal as fuck to that 12 year old because everything else his eyes saw today were so oh, advanced, so like the right. video games you he played, so the right. movies he watched. Because if we had him watch any par. of our movies from the 80s or played yeah. Nint- fucking Atari, you know. Yeah, you're right. I'm, th- I'm, th- I'm, I'm thinking of Gizmo and an et and this yeah. kid's thinking of you know so the art that you, you know, and i Guardians saw of the galaxy it was blew our minds because it was cutting edge then along with everything yeah. our eyes saw you know and that, that that original star trek spaceship looks real <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like you go back and look at it and you're like oh i can actually see the string holy shit Dude, but it was mind-blowing when i was a kid when right man was realism <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right you know it's funny you bring up he-man because i'm working on this documentary where I, I was a huge, uh, I was a big fan of toys when I was a kid. Yeah. Uh, really lost myself. I had a big imagination. And I loved He-Man and Skeletor and all that. And I, I had Castle Grayskull. It was like the best Christmas ever when I got that. So Jeez. I moved around my whole life and I lost everything. Mm. And so I'm, I'm filming this documentary where I am going to go and rebuy these old toys. You know, I want to, there's a, a lot of the He-Man stuff, uh, the green machine, like the, the, the uh, bike that's like you know you can skid on it you can like like slide on it <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm making sure that i'm buying these from somebody at their house like a somebody that's just collected things okay. and i'm getting their story of how they got it oh and how it ended up in my arms <laughs> you know what i mean and so i'm pretty excited about the documentary so anyway recently i got an original he-man again and because you can buy like fake ones, but like they don't yeah. look the same. And I got an original, actually one of my really good clients, Tim Monster, love yeah. Tim. Uh, he brought it for me as a, like a, just a tip for for tattooing it. And dude, that's Cash awesome. is awesome. But man, that He-Man, was it made my fucking day. I you know? bet, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Immediately just brought me back to like memories of a kid playing with, with He-Man, you know. So. I also. You're, you're right. Dude, well, and I also like your story that is like, man, I can imagine going to convention being 12. I just love that you picked that because a guy like you, since you've been <laughs> yeah. tattooing since you were 15, yeah. the setting yeah. had to. I didn't enter a tattoo game until my 30s, you know. So. But something happened when you were 12, though, right? Like yeah. usually yeah, right. there, that's what to me, that's what my whole life has been a series of those moments mm. where let's say let's say a band that you love you'll you'll remember the moment you discovered the cure yeah, right. the day you know what i mean forever mm. whatever whatever band it is you're right you know dude. what i mean well it's funny because we'll uh, check the shirt i'm wearing josh i don't know what camera should i be on mike just to show oh shit look at yes. this shirt see? boy special k hey. turbo man yep. you see this boy breaking Hey. <laughs> yeah, and see, that's another example. That was my that was my movie, man. Like yes. when Breaking Two Electric Boogaloo came out, you better fucking believe I was at that theater day one. Come on, boy, me too. And I, you know, when the credits rolled, we hid because we didn't have extra, we didn't have money to pay for the movie again. And Mama just had us hide in the theater when they came and like whatever. And then when the next right. round came, we just got back up on our seats and watched it yeah, again. Yeah. <laughs> I, I remember those days too. Yeah, yeah, yeah man. Amazing. And I think I was telling. 
Sean, he actually, uh, Beck earlier today at, when I was at IL9, was remembering, man, the year, you know how albums always dropped on Tuesdays. And yeah. dude, I remember there was a year that like changed my fucking life because I was already into break dancing. Breaking Boogaloo was already out. And in the same week, the movie Footloose, the soundtrack to Footloose dropped. And Michael Jackson's Beat It dropped. Damn, and Boy damn. George's album. All three of those dropped on like, or at least in my experience, because I haven't right. like Googled to like check the dates. But they all showed up in my world on the same week. And right. after Breaking already changed my life, now here comes Michael Jackson's Beat It and Footloose. Like, well, fuck, I'm a dancer and a performer for life now, <laughs> you know? <laughs> right, exactly. And that's what I meant. That When I say, like, that tattooing makes me feel like a little kid watching a magic trick, that, that's the same thing. Mm. The, you know, I'm a, I'm a super nostalgic person. Mm. And uh, there is an actual feeling of those moments. And, yeah. And, you know, that's what I say when I, when somebody takes their shirt off at a convention and they have a, a beautiful back piece and they're kind of moving their body around and the tattoo moves with it. Mm. I feel that. Yeah, about that. And that to me is the magic of tattooing. Yes. And that 12 year old that I'm yeah. talking about, I believe that's the kind of thing they would see and it would just be like a world of wonder. My God, dude. Yeah. I saw it in your eyes when you were talking about it. I almost felt bad for like almost bringing something up to make that go away. Cause yeah, mm -hmm. dude, I saw it in your eyes and the awe and wonder as if you became that when speaking of it, going back there, yeah. even right now, which is beautiful, man. And I was really lucky. My mother was extremely supportive of yeah. me. You know, she, uh, there was like a biker swap meet thing going on. It also had tattooing at it at it because I came from a town where there was no tattoo shops. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't even go into the shop and watch anybody. I just was like buying tattoo magazines and fantasizing about one day, what if. Mm -hmm. And so when this biker swap meet thing that had like three tattoo shops there, she she took me there a couple hour drive away and she was the one that was like, do you ever teach anybody, you know? And there was this one woman that was like, well, we've got a trailer in the back. If he wants to move into that trailer, oh, yeah, yeah, there's no, there's no running. And I would have done anything. I would have been like, I don't give a shit. If there's no right. lights, I will be there. And I will be there the first person in the morning sweeping the floor, you know? <coughs> so I just, I had that in me, that magic, that bug, that yeah. fire, I guess. You yeah, know? But yeah, that. today you're right. That 12 year old kid would, that's what he would expect to see. Yeah. And then but it still has to be a like some Mike version and be of like, it. Show me how to just do that. Right. Yeah. I'm even noticing the language is changing, right? Because we always know it, known of a uh, tattoo machine. And of course there's the arbitrary <laughs> tattoo gun that people would say. And we'd be like, Hey, 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 it's not a gun. Mm -hmm. Well, now I'm hearing ma mainly people to say pen. They mm -hmm. don't even say machine anymore. They're just saying tattoo pen. Really? I, I've definitely heard it a lot. Yeah. I remember, you know, cause I come from a world of coil machines. I remember, that was this that's part of the sound you'd walk into a shop oh, and you'd yeah. smell green soap mm -hmm. and you'd hear the buzz mm -hmm. and both of those were the, that was part of the addiction mm -hmm. you know pe people would walk in with their friends and they weren't getting tattooed and they'd walk in and smell that green soap and hear mm -hmm. that machine and they'd be like ooh, mm -hmm. right yeah and then now we've changed up different soaps because people are allergic and we got rotary so it's like a real different environment right but i remember being at a convention and i'd be like listen yeah it's quieter oh and every yeah. year it just it's quieter it's oh, quieter yeah. and i remember saying one day, I bet you it'll be 50% rotaries and 50% coils. And boy, <laughs> is I wrong? Because I think it's 99% rotaries, yeah, right? Yeah, right. You've got some hanger honors and some mm -hmm. just old school people. Because coils certainly are going to do. I think coils still probably line better than about anything. I know yeah. Dan Cuban makes a really, really good liner. Yeah. Uh, the you know, Bishop makes a really good liner. There's, there's some the out there. Sobas. Yeah, Soba machines, yeah. right? Sets the ferry machines. Yeah. Like... You know, any of these really good old school builders, like if you're really into lining, I, I would still bet probably coils are going to do it. Yeah. But even gray from, wash, man, you know. it took me years to get, figure out a coil, you know, to get us like with my Mickey Sharps, man, they're still, oh, man, man talking about I used to keep those butter. in my pocket. Yeah. You know. To me, so, so I'm, it's funny you brought Mickey Sharps up. That was like, a fucking treasure. I remember mm -hmm. reading. It's like, if you really are serious, mm -hmm. there really was no other option. Mm -hmm. You need a Mickey Sharps. Mm -hmm. And I remember I bought, I wanted one so bad. And this is just to show what a like giver I am. Mm. I bought my friend a Mickey Sharps as a gift. Mm. 
before I even had one. And Damn. I remember I, when I gave it to him, I like didn't want to let it go. You know, right. He like, grabbed it and I was like, uh, pulling back. Right. And, um, and he kept it in his pocket as well. Like we both ended up having them and we would clean them up and keep mm. those machines in our pockets. Mm. I wouldn't dare even leave it at the shop. Mm. It was like the most important thing to me was my Mickey Sharps. My God. Because, you know, Paul Booth was using it at the time and, yeah. you know, Mickey Sharps himself obviously was using it and, you know, Robert Hernandez. And mm-hmm. it was just, you know, you had them too. Like they were just so special, right? Yeah. So special. Made out of that, that burnt metal and mm-hmm. oh, number carved in, etched in. The always exact covered. Number. Yeah. You always say, like, what, what number you got? That's you right. Know? Yeah. And that Mickey, Mickey Sharps micro dial was fucking everything. See, and I miss that. Like I do, you know, I, I'm so happy with my machines. I'm so happy with what Bishop has given to me, to me and and I use it on a daily, but there's something so special about that though. And, mm-hmm. and, and I, I suppose that 12 year old getting his first mm-hmm. whatever machine would, mm-hmm. would probably feel like that too, because that's all they know. Well, right? dude, I feel about maybe around 30 to 50 episodes ago, you predicted maybe one day they're becoming a new craze of coils like all the new kids will use it because it's like vintage or something you know yeah anytime the pendulum swings heavy one any way right there's always going to be that's what punk rock is right you know you're going against the system yeah so if everybody's using rotor or sorry um yeah if everybody's using rotaries then a couple of guys are going to going to use coils yeah Uh, and when i say guys i mean you know guys and girls yeah um and I think that's kind of cool. Mm-hmm. I want to see what happens with it, especially <laughs> if they're newer. Yeah. Like, like especially if they're n- newer in the sense of mm-hmm. like now, like mm-hmm. not a brand new tattooer, but like like yeah, you know, someone right. that's never used them. They're doing a beautiful work, but mm-hmm. they just want that feel. Because mm-hmm. I still love the idea of walking into a tattoo shop that looks like a tattoo yeah. shop. Because mine looks like an art gallery. Yeah, right. But there's something that's where that's 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 where that magic happens. You mm-hmm. walk in and it's covered in flash. And mm-hmm. I'm not talking like Cherry Creek. I'm talking like oh, yeah. hand painted, spit shaded flash. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Come on, you can't tell me that doesn't feel good. Right? Yeah, you know? you'd love Big Mises shop. You know? Yeah. Um, it's dope, and it's here in Dayton, Ohio, too. And you just described it to a T. It's like walking back in time. You know? I hope those don't ever go away. Yeah, man. And, he just, and, yeah. and you just nailed it. That's like walking back in time. Yeah. The music, the smell. Yeah. The, the, the designs, the way that they're doing. The oh work, yeah, it's right? all wood. It's got the swinging doors going through every yes, inch the of the doors. walls covered in like all the dope signs. Flash. No bag chatter. No yeah. crybabies. Oh yeah, you know, all hand painted by me. And his, yeah. I want all that. I love the, the cart, the wood cutouts of the crying baby mm-hmm. and the sword the, through the panther. Yeah, that's what? tattoo. Yeah. That's tattoo language, yeah, right? It's like man. people that don't get folk art, they don't get it, and they think it's just bad. And right. the same, you know, people that look at traditional tattoos, if they like realism, and they're like, "What the fuck's up with that?" And it's like yeah. you'll get it someday. Yeah. You know, and it's beautiful. Yeah, because in the same city is the new Isle Nine's going on, and it's gonna look vastly different it's not going to be like walking back in time an old tattoo shop at all and both are like needed and necessary and it's beautiful because the guys that work at aisle nine and they're doing what they do go and get tattooed by me to his shop right to go experience that themselves like right it's just fucking beautiful how we can honor and appreciate one another You know, even like rock and roll bands, like some of my favorite music is bands that produce music that I'm not ever gonna, you know? Yeah, exactly. There are, there are audiophiles that literally will only go see live music. They won't even listen to it recorded. Man. They just say that if you, if you want to experience this for real, you got to go see them live. Yeah, right. right. And it's like, that's a rare thing, but I I kind (laughs) of get that. Me too. Yeah. Even though I'm a realism artist, like I just love a good tattoo. Yeah, brother. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like for here's a good example. I never paid attention to black the blackout sleeves. We used to call them piercer sleeves back in the day, or strong arms is mm-hmm. what we called them. And because they were always patchy and gray, and even if a great tattooer did it, they just never looked that good. And then all of a sudden, people are doing blackout sleeves that are ridiculously black yeah. on the elbow in the ditch. Mm-hmm. It just looks flawless, mm-hmm. and you can't help but just go, "Damn, yeah, right," because you know how. You know how that's not easy. Yeah, right. So as a tattoo artist, you're like, damn. But then as a non-tattoo artist, you're like, damn, that's really aesthetically pleasing. Yeah. You know? And so now people, that used to be a cover-up. Now people are showing up because we've got a woman named Caitlin that works with us and she does them unbelievably good. And people are coming in with no 
cover up that's just a blank sli- a blank arm but they want it to be blacked out because she does it like that mm. you know and nice. it's so interesting to me yeah so people are like well what kind of music do you like my answer has always been good music it's yeah, the right. same with tattooing yeah good tattooing that's right don't yeah. don't just think it's realism for me because mm-hmm. i just love a good tattoo yeah man for sure i love funny tattoos i love silly tattoos too oh yeah you know? like they can be dumb like oh yeah uh you know, Danzig punching a shark. Cool. Mm-hmm. Awesome. <laughs> you know? I'm totally. Man. Especially the, tell me the funny story of why that's in, on you. That's, right? that's, right. that's what I'm down for. Yeah. Those are the conventions. Right. That, those are the conversations after the convention at the bar that you're just like, you know, Hey, and it's like this funny stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Well, like, that, you, you know, know, you do that works your shows. It's, um, Oh, good. You know, I remember we were at the World Championships in Vegas, you know, where it's the best of the best throwing it down two days in a row. Right. And yeah. our buddy working the show goes over and gets a quickie of a Bart Simpson outline around his nipple to where his nipple yeah. now looks like Simpson's pecker. You know? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> See, I fucking love that. That's, I don't know. I hope we don't ever lose that. Like, I, there's that part of me that wants to see tattooing be at the highest level possible, but like, I don't know. At the end of the day, it's like some of those tattoos are just so real and raw that I just, I don't know. I'll always appreciate that, I think. Yes. Oh, Just give me a good, clean, solid tattoo. Mm -hmm. Fuck yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Man, it's so beautiful. And, you know, when just real quick, just touch on rotaries real quick that I was thinking, man, because in the transition, if you remember, it wasn't just a transition from our rotaries to now. And for me, it was the Hawk machine, right? To yeah. whatever machine you transferred over from well, finally laying your, you know, the traditional machine down and picking up a rotary. But in between that transition, one thing most guys laid down before they laid down their whole machine was their tubes. Because I was always about the balance of the weight. And I liked big round yeah. steel tube grips with my Mickey Sharps and my Soba liners. But when guys started just switch over and where they were tired of scrubbing and autoclaving and, and all that to the plastic disposable tubes, but still using yeah. the real needles and needle bars. And y- y- no matter how much you tighten them fuckers, they'd feel like they'd get loose. There was a difference in balance. Man, I forgot about those. Yeah, you're right. There was a time where everybody had and they even had like the fat grips and everything. Totally. They were blue. They just- and most of them, and, and yeah. I think until True Tubes came out, they yeah. were kind of garbage. Yeah, it felt and like Derp it to came me. Up with True Tubes, yeah. And in that, like, in like I some forgot. guys hung on and was tattooing with plastic grips and heavy coils. Yeah, for a while, and, and and that was the part of the transition I didn't care for, and I just was like, well, fuck it, if I'm setting it all down, and then you know I crossed over mm-hmm. and picked up what felt like a tissue, and it was a caulk machine. Yeah. <laughs> I re- I remember there was so. From my memory, I would think like, hey, why don't we use rotary machines? It seems logical. Like, the, hey, it's just, it's just a needle going in and out, right? But they were on like that rotary cam. So I didn't really think about the needle kind of swiveling at the bottom of the tube, you know? Mm, mm. And so I was like, okay, because I was, I, you could go, uh, at the time, you could even go online then. And some of these rotary machines were like a hundred bucks, mm-hmm. you know, they were super inexpensive. And I was like, always tempted but I'm like, well, there's a reason that nobody's using them. Mm. And then like a few old school builders would build their version of a rotary. Mm. That it looked beautiful. It was, it looked like a machine, Yeah, you know, a shag built. There's, I remember there was one. Right. And so I was like toying around with these ideas. And then a company called Stigma showed up out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. Do you remember them? Yeah. There was like the Stigma Hyper, the Stigma, you know, I don't yeah. remember what the other ones were called, but there was like three or four of them. Yeah. And people were like, a lot of the color realism guys mm. were starting to, say they were doing that and then numa came out the air compressed mm. the air powered version so i was like interested but i still was i i think i just knew coils yeah. so i was like scared yeah. like oh well, i don't know and then i was very lucky that uh at a show in dayton actually yeah that john montgomery put on yeah the gem gem city i think john montgomery and brian yeah put brenner. That on. yeah brian brenner yeah. yeah thank you guys uh there was a hawk representative there yeah. and he he gave me one yeah and i was like okay this is awesome and i'll be honest with you it sat in my drawer for a long time and it wasn't until i was struggling with putting in i remember it was light blue it was a lot of white in this blue yeah. 
and it was across this, I don't remember what it was, it was some comic book character on the top of this guy's upper back. And you know, a lot, we as we know as, as tattoo artists, the upper back can be kind of a pain in the ass. It holds some water. So it's really easy to get a lot of plasma up there. Yeah. And it's harder to saturate, if, especially with coils. So I was like, fuck it, what do I have to lose? And I grabbed that hawk and I went to put it in. And I was just think, you know, it was so quiet. I couldn't feel any feedback. Like I'm so used to feedback from my coils. Yeah. There's no vibration. And I was like, oh, what is this shit? And I wiped it off and that shit was solid as fuck. I, and I was like, know oh, it. God. I'm saying. Fuck, what am I going to do now? Right. Yeah, yeah. dude. I rem- and it's funny you bring that very moment in history up because that show, The Gem City Heart Attack in Dayton, Ohio, put on by John Montgomery and Brian Brenner, is also the first time you and I met in the flesh. When I That's already right. was a fan of you, but didn't know what you looked like and helped you carry your stuff in and just how nice you were to me. I didn't think you were the Joshua Carl. I later found <laughs> out like the nicest dude here was the legend I was looking forward to meet. Didn't realize I already met him. But at that same show, I remember that representative there because he was a little like uh, forward, you know, and there was heavy hitters yeah, at that show. That and too. if you remember at that show, Kyle Cotterman won best of show. You were one of the judges yes. and it was tight between yes. him and Nate Beavers. And Kyle did that. I, Mr. I, I Miyagi. remember the tattoo. Mr. Miyagi. Yep. Yeah. I remember. And then Nate did the suicidal tendencies portrait. Yes. Right. With the hat flipped up. That's so cool that you remember that, man. Dude, and I remember wow. that you were the judge down the basement and after it was called and Kyle won and Nate was kind of walking away and whether he had his head down or that's just the way he walked, you, I remember how you were so complimentary to him and to both of them and saying that you, the great Joshua Carlton, literally the judge said, I would get tattooed by either one of these men. And I was an apprentice just like in the talk about the 12 year old in awe and wonder, you know, that's mm-hmm. where I was at. You know, See, and you don't, and that's such a good example. You don't know how your words will affect somebody. Yeah. Think of how many times you've said something and you have no idea somebody out there remembers you saying something to them, yeah. either great yeah. or horrible, and you don't even remember it, and it affected their lives. Oh, yeah. And just words who, are important, words carry weight. And just who you're being. Because but just your accountants before you ever used words was also speaking very loud. Hmm. That's why one of my favorite quotes by C.S. Lewis is go out into all the world and preach the good news. And if you must use words before you ever hmm. used words, Josh, you were saying something by how you were being and who you were being and how you treated me and made me feel right. That's why I was an instant fan then because they say never meet your heroes. But in this case, it was a good one. Now, fast forward, maybe, you know, a couple, a year or two later, I don't remember the timeline. Now we're out at your show that I think you threw with John Montgomery somewhere in California. And there were heavy hitters there. And it was the first time ever doing a show. It might have been the only one. And me and Kyle's out there tattooing Nate Beavers, uh, you know, Roman. Oh, you guys got all kinds of heavy hitters. And that same Hawk rep was there. And he shared the booth with Nate Beavers. I think Nate's van broke down halfway and the Hawk rep got him there the rest of the way to California. Yeah, I do remember that. Yeah. But I remember I got tattooed by Nate and he did my grandma's portrait on me and it won tattoo of the day. And Nate, that that guy had put the Hawk, Nate used the Hawk machine maybe for the first time to do my grandma's portrait. Mm. And so since Nate used it and you were down, on that day is when I decided to buy one. But me and Kyle had already told that dude no. He hit us up in Nashville, other places. We're both mm-hmm. running with our Mickey Sharps. If it ain't broke, why right. fix it? You're cool. Exactly. That machine may be cool, but we're killing it with our Mickey Sharps. But when Nate yeah. Beavers tattooed me, I got curious enough. And the same thing happened. When I went home, I put in a 17 mag, went with color on an Elvis back piece and wiped away and was shocked that it went in effortlessly like butter. Yeah. You're like, oh, this changes everything. Yeah. Yeah. My God. And then they were the first, I, I think they were, I don't think they were the first to come up with a pen. A few independent tattooers, I believe Ted Marks made the Marksman first. Yeah. Um, but they, Hawk Cheyenne was yeah. the first to really drop the pen to the public. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? And even when you were and going to, it is hard to remember timeline because even when we said Hawk, then you brought up Stigma, then Numa, but something that hit my radar from across, abroad before even Stigma was those swatch machines. You remember them? From like oh, I, Europe? I do. Wow. 
Uber. There's so many different iterations of things. Yeah. And I think that's why when Rotary's first came out, it seemed gimmicky. It didn't know, like, it's just, you know, it's new. You don't know what you don't know. And it just seemed new. Like, I remember before wireless, there was like a battery pack that you put on your wrist right yeah and some people were kind of going nuts about that and i was like i don't know it's not that big of a deal to have a cord plugged in i'm not paying 300 bucks for this battery pack on my wrist and mm-hmm. i remember thinking it'd be cool if it was wireless but this didn't seem possible to me at the right. time right you know the battery's gonna die in the middle of the tattoo and your machine's gonna slow down and mm-hmm. as technology changed it, it i mean obviously it grew i was a little bit late coming in on wireless and stuff and it was like there's nothing wrong with my cord and there isn't, mm-hmm. but man, that freedom of movement, it is pretty fucking nice. You, you know? and I miss is the foot pedal. I know. Yeah. Dude, I, even I, when I, I'm I like too. wireless, I still found myself every time I'm going in with a stretch, I tap my foot down. Like yeah. that's part of me. Well, like I'm used to tap foot. it to the music. Totally. You know? Yeah. Dude. And I still tap my foot, you know? Yeah. 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 Oh man. That's pretty cool. Uh, that's a pretty cool trip down memory lane, man. Yeah, brother. Yeah. So much has happened, like you said, in our industry and with technology. And my God, it is not stopping anytime soon, is it? No, no. I'm, I'm, I'm fully embracing it. I'm, I'm cautious with it because it, it is something that I feel like we all want to protect so much. Mm-hmm. And like, I, I think that because most tattooers are good, I think that the, the cream will rise to the top and i i think anybody pulling any bullshit will get called out pretty quickly and and uh not be able to continue on doing that so i think that the tattoo industry looks after its own and as long as we're keeping in mind to leave tattooing better than we found it and to to love each other and to embrace each other like here's an example of like you know for a long time the tattoos were definitely just a boys club and not only are there easily at least as you know half and half if there might even be more women now i don't even know but man are some of these female tattooers unbelievable mm-hmm. you know oh yeah uh, you know you mentioned back earlier as yeah. you said right yeah. you know like it's so common to see just the ridiculously talented female tattooers and I, I, that makes me very happy to see just open to the people that are truly down to do it with their heart, with their passion, you know? Yes. Yeah, it's, it's exciting. That. It's a very exciting to me. It really is, man. It is wild because like, I almost feel like I have, have to con- make a confession to you. I don't know. Just because and Mike, I don't know if you can relate, you know, because Josh's level of just like sheer adoration and awe and wonder that he still has after 30 plus years for tattooing. Like, I feel like I have to confess to Josh that I love tattooing, but I don't love it like he does. It's understandable. But you know know what I I do love? What I realize? Because I fucking love tattooing, but my biggest love is the people. And the, you know, and that's just me, like the dopest back piece I've ever done. I'm so proud of. I think I'm more like interested, invested in the dude I put the piece on and how's life's going and how's relationship with his wife is more so than what that piece looks like when he's at the pool. You know, like, and I think that that is kind of equal because you're still passionate. You're right, dude. Yeah, man. Sometimes I just almost in Josh's presence feel like a fraud because, man, the 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 level of love and passion he has for it, which I do, but it don't hold a candle to his. But I can relate to it. My level of passion for the people now. It's like and, and, I, I, and I'm glad you said that, too, because I definitely don't want any of our listeners to think that, oh, wow, well, maybe I'm not supposed to tattoo because Josh is nutty about it like mm-hmm. i'm nutty about what I, a lot of stuff i love <laughs> like, that though you know, that you yeah. are that's so attractive it's so fucking inspiring oh, um, thank you yeah dude but what do you think mike was, oh fuck yeah i mean yeah i'm i always get caught up and i love this episode uh already like i'm watching it for the first time right now yeah and like I'm giddy because, like, I don't have access to this information. I can't Google this. Yeah. You guys are a wealth of knowledge that everybody gets to just, like, a slight, you know, slight moments in history. And just to hear you guys describe them, 
Yeah. Like, I get that feeling. Like, okay, good. a magic trick. Good. Yeah, good. good. That's what I'm really hoping to convey. I forget sometimes that my lived experience is not everybody else's, you know? Mm. So in my world, I'm like, well, of course this makes sense. And it's like, oh, wait a minute. They didn't, they didn't do that. Mm-hmm. Okay. You know? Mm-hmm. And, you know, I think something else is important back to when you're saying leaving tattoo and better when we found it. Yes. And how we can help one another grow in our technical ability in this craft. But it's also something else that's equally as important that I think, you know, we're equally stand for is how we treat one another in the process Mm -hmm. and along the way. Because you guys all know it always breaks my heart, you know, when I see other tattooers tear others down, period. But even more so when I'll see a dude who's an actually a good artist tear someone else down and wreck on their shit, almost like he has more authority or his opinion matters more because his portfolio is cooler. And that in those gauges start to break my heart because it's like, yes, we all want to be the best that we are technically. Um, you know, I think to sum it up, it just reminds me of, you know, I would go as far as to say that Ernest Hemingway says it best in this one liner where he says, there's nothing noble in being superior to your fellow man. True nobility is being superior to your former self. Wow. Right. And it's so, and and again, leaving, how are we really treating one another along the way? And are we literally helping one another build? And there's nothing noble about you even thinking you're superior to someone else because you do it better, you doing it right, and they doing it wrong or any of that. The only nobility is you being the best version you can be and better than who you were yesterday. You know, there's that age old saying, hey, you take care of me and I'll take care of you. You guys ever hear that one? It's an age old saying, you take care of me, I'll take care of you. Well, how about this? How about... I'll take care of me for you and you take care of you for me. Yeah. Right. How about I just take 1000% responsibility for me? Right. And if there's anybody else doing anything, um, I'm going to do my best to actually try and help. Are we helping or are we hurting? Right. Um, and something else I just really felt led to share with you brothers today. Um, which is a story I know you've heard. And it's a true story about the great legendary genius that today in history we know is Thomas Edison. And maybe you guys know this story. But one day Thomas Edison, he came home and he gave a paper, a note to his mom, and he told her, my teacher gave me this paper and told me that only to give it to my mother. His mother's eyes were tearful as she read the letter out loud to her child. Your son is a genius. The school is just too small for him and doesn't have enough good teachers for training him. Please teach him yourself. Guys, after many, many years, after Edison's mother died, and he was now one of the greatest inventors of the country, one day he was looking through old family things and suddenly he saw a folded paper in the corner of the drawer of a desk. He took it out and he opened it. On the paper was written, your son is mentally ill. We won't let him come to school anymore. Edison cried for hours. And then he wrote in his diary. Thomas Alva Edison was a mentally ill child that by a hero mother became the genius of the century. Wow. I was not familiar with that story, but that's incredible. Isn't it beautiful? Look at the power that that held. So the the weight that that held for him. Mm. Mm. How do we treat one another along the way when the rest of the world is so quick to point the finger and say, you are this, you are that, you're doing it wrong to throw labels on you. Your friend, your son, your coworker is not right. And why the rest of the world may be so quick to jump on it. It reminds me of one of my favorite scripture verses that I share all the time. Call those things which be not as though they were. Just like my grandmama did for me. Just like Edison's mama did for him. She did not treat him by the report of man or what everyone was saying about him on social media at the time. 
She called those things which be not as though they were and spoke to the great version of him and read the letter to him and imprinted into his spirit that he was a genius, that he's not mentally ill, right? And she spoke to that version of him and called that truth forth in him. We must support our brothers and sisters along the way, all the way through, all the way through. It matters if you really want to leave tattooing our industry better. Yeah, absolutely. My goodness. What a fun day, though, going down memory lane, man. Yeah. Jeez. I love it. And I swear you got me one to even just pull out my Mickey Sharps. You right. know? You still have them? Mm-hmm. You, you still, yeah. See, I, I, I wish so bad I would have kept stuff like that. I don't know why I didn't. Dude, and it reminded me on an early episode, you brought up like two magazines, one of the first ones you and I think Goadway were ever in, and yep, you put it yep. out there to our listeners. I want to re-put that out there since we got more listeners listening today. If anyone could get their hands on those two magazines for you, what were well, they, they did. They, yeah, they said that they were sent to me actually. By no a couple fucking of different way people. you got yeah, them. Yeah, absolutely. Oh my God, absolutely. I, I, I feel bad. I should have definitely brought that up. I, I, <laughs> so I, I didn't bring it up. I should have. <laughs> yeah. No, about a week later, I got both of the magazines Jeez. from two different people. Yeah. So oh. thank you so much. I'm still awful that I don't have your name right now, but I'm going to make sure to find it. Oh my so thank God. You, thank you, kind stranger. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <coughs> wow. What a gift. Dude, yeah, that's been weighing amazing. on me for like a year. I hope Josh finds those one day. Yeah, no, I totally got them. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was so cool to see, too. It was like, oh, my gosh. Look at that tattoo's backwards in there, you know? It's <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and it was just cool to, like, look at old tattoo magazines, like stuff that used to be mind-blowing, and it still is really good. I would, you know, I'd see these people, these tattoos from these people that were my heroes, and, and they are definitely good, but... The advancement in tattooing is just so monumentally bigger that yeah. it, it's difficult to see what I saw mm -hmm. then. Mm -hmm. I can tell it's good, but because you know nothing had been done better than that then. Mm. So how crazy is that now? Like tattooing is only going to get better, right? As far as like the uh, you know f the physical like artisticness of it, right? I mean, only more people that understand the nuances of art are going to be tattooing and. You know, we're going to always go through ups and downs of phases of mm -hmm. like, hey, you, you can't really tattoo like that. Mm -hmm. That's not going to stay. It's not yeah. proper, but whatever. All those things, you know, but we're going to see some stuff too that even now today's work yeah. that we're talking about being so amazing will still look, you know, I don't want to say dated because it's not going to look dated, but it's mm -hmm. going to, there's going to be stuff that's even more mind blowing. I wonder if it'd be a fun episode for you and I to just show the world our first portfolio like our first couple right. and then today just anytime i show my guys my first few they feel way better about themselves <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah well i'll tell people that I'll, I'll i'll be watching somebody's tattoo early on and i'm like it's way better than i was in my first few you know yeah right they're like really like they yeah. just in their brain they just think i was always doing this it's like right. not even close dog they think you were like mike <laughs> not even close yeah mike is like what a couple of months in and he smokes me from when I was like, he's yeah, me too. But again, close. what we saw and freak would frequently see, therefore our frequency on what was even possible was like, well, one, not even like even close. We are cavemen in comparison. You know, it seemed like, like, mm -hmm. like we were li almost limited to flash. There wasn't we even equipment Google wise, shit. like colors, colors were certainly nothing. You could, you didn't put white in your tattoo at all. You you might mix it with another color, but it was still shitty. Oh my god! You know, yeah, needles were not. You know, it's, it's even equipment wise, and just not even understanding how to tune a coil machine properly. And oh yeah, everything was against you. Oh, everything was up yeah. against you. You know, absolutely. Even the flash, like I remember, like doing like the famous tiger. You know, eyes the in the butt, or yeah. the tiger eyes in the butterfly wings. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. There was always tattoos that were kind of cheesy that I loved. Like we called them pop out stars, but just like that star on everybody that's like, you know, black on one side and it looks kind of like it's, you know, pivoted kind of, or raised up on one side. <laughs> we, I, I love doing those and people hate them now, but I, I was always excited to do that. Or like a 
sparrow on someone's chest, like a traditional sparrow. I was always like, it's such a good day when somebody walk in and want a sparrow. Man. Yeah. Dude, for sure. And it's funny because you brought up like, hey, you love all types of tattoos. You love fun tattoos. And boy, haven't we learned. You know, it's funny when I started because I'm such Mr. Passionate and serious. I thought when I started that everyone that gets tattooed, it's well thought out. It's got some meaning behind it. (laughs) Boy, was I fucking wrong, right? And I learned so much of how and people would blow my mind coming in getting joke tattoos. I remember people would lose bets and come in and be like, yeah, lost bet. So we get to ride on their ass cheek. You make it permanent. It's like, for real? Like, you know, dudes coming in, getting their taints tattooed because they lost a bet the (laughs) night before at the bar, getting their buddy dunking a basketball hoop in a bong or something. Ridiculous (laughs) shit. You know what I'm saying? Um, That now is like all walks of life. And even that is not only fun and light, it brings healing to people and that we get to be the vessels and the orchestrators of people having real life experiences and being blown in like the wind through our doors. And we get to be a vessels and be a part of the rest of their life, wherever they're at in their life. You know, um, it's an ongoing story of our life that we get to be a part of so many others. And, some people love that perspective. Other people make fun of me for it, right? And that's okay. Yeah. I think that's what I'm here for, though. I'm here for that part of tattooing, you know? I think that's why I'm so passionate still, so. Yeah, dude. I, I, I think that, you know, things are going well for me. I get a scan in, in June, and uh, as long as I stay healthy, I think I got at least five more years of tattooing in me, so let's hope so. Oh, yeah, dude. Man, I want a Josh Carlson tattoo. Right. Yeah, dude. I'll, use, uh, use, I'll, I'll get a Mickey Sharps. Man. Ew, yeah. Maybe I'll make sure that my last tattoo is like all my older equipment, like just the last one I do. <laughs> just do it with a coil machine and, you know, Man. no internet, not to just draw it, just dude. draw everything, hand stencil. Even bring an old camera cool. to shoot it. Right, right. <laughs> we got to wait to develop it to even see them. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll remember taking like a whole roll. If I did a tattoo I really love, like some of my first portraits and stuff, I would take like, like I get like a 36 roll of film and take like the whole roll. Oh, yeah. And dude. then I immediately go to that one hour photo and oh, be like, yeah. come on, come on. One of them has to be good. Please. One of them has to be decent, you know? Yeah. Please, God. I'll write you a That's letter to, to book my appointment with you and ask you for your phone number. <laughs> right, right. Right. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> awesome, man. Man, I love you, brother. It's nice rapping with you, man. It's good to be back. Yeah. My goodness, Mike, thank you. Tattoo guardians all over the globe. We thank you. We love you. Like usual, hopefully today re and invigorated you and sparked some good thought. We speak blessings upon you wherever you're at in your creative process and your work week, uh, in your relationships, all of it. Tattoo guardians around the world. We thank you. We love you. We'll see you next week.